Tell us about that, because you were telling me, and I was blown away. Um, yeah. So, it was crazy. I already, like, um, I've been very lucky that, like, uh, my sponsors in the back, OG Nerd, they're dope. Uh, sweet plug to them. They, they've they been looking after me a lot, and really, we got a great partnership in that, um, you know, obviously, with Malaysia and, and their, uh, their current climate and their economy, like, uh, you know, we're quite we're better off in, in our countries quite in like financially. So um, I know the company is still growing. So I, they actually help in help sponsor me and the show for me to get over there. Um, so everything was covered. I'd gone there for my second trip to go over. And then as I'm pretty much arriving there, that's when all the stuff started hitting pretty bad. So, all, all shows were starting to get canceled and whatnot. And I'm thinking I'm going to like, I've come here for nothing really. Cause the show's going to get canceled. And what they ended up doing was they had a smaller event with less people. So I believe they're, they were allowed to have at least thir- like maybe 30 or 40 people tops in one area before the full restrictions hit. So we did a show in their little performance center area. Um, and we did that there. So I ended up doing the show, which is really cool. Some, Fans traveled really far to come see me, which which was awesome. So the the, the German suplex really hit, um, you know, everywhere over there, which is dope. So we did the show, um, and then pretty much like my flight was cancelled on the way home, and I didn't. No one told me except my my travel agent ended up calling calling me up and going, "Hey man, like your your flight's been moved from Thursday to Saturday." I'm like, okay, is there a reason? It's like, no reason they didn't even tell me. So I'm like, I went to go maybe get my flight sorted. I went to the mall to where it was and it was packed. Like everyone's, they must've canceled everyone's flights. So I said, look, I'll just keep the next same flight. Um, and then literally two days after that, they they declared everything on lockdown. So uh, I, I caught up with my friends and then stayed in my hotel room for like three, four days, like three days. And the day I left, I was lucky because that's when they started it. Um, they put in like military patrol on the street because uh, people weren't listening. So the military was patrolling that you couldn't go in and out of buildings without the um, then testing your temperature. It was, it, was, it was crazy. Every flight on the board when I was flying home was canceled except mine. And I was like, they, they might cancel my flight and I might get stuck here. So I was lucky to get home and I got home and then uh, my auntie lives maybe like an hour and a half out of Melbourne. They live in Singapore. So they, they're trying to sell their house. So they let me stay in the empty house so I wouldn't like, you know, if I had anything, get my parents sick or anything. So I stayed in this house for two weeks um, on my own, not seeing a human or anything. It was full on so um yeah it's been it, it's been pretty crazy um at the moment we're still on lockdown here at the moment you can't really do much um but it's not too bad like you can go get food and exercise and just your essentials really but you, yeah what do you mean exercise you mean go for a run or something right you can go you for a run and go for a walk you can't i technically because i'm a personal trainer down here i can do a one-on-one with a client but the rules are really confusing. So it's like they're saying that like you can only leave your house for four reasons, which is like going to work, uh, if you're going to the doctors, if you're getting groceries, or if you're exercising. But then we got retail stores open because they're trying to like keep the economy alive. But I'm mm. like, and, and hairdressers for some reason, the hairdressers <laughs> are open, but people are getting pulled over for not going on the central business. So I'm confused as to like if I'm going to get a haircut. It's not really essential, but they're open. So ha- I, I don't know. So I'm just playing it safe and just not leaving. I'm just yeah, going to stay yeah. here and just like like figure out because there's, there's still so much to do. Like I'm not um, – I, I don't get bored. Like mm. I'm not a guy that gets bored. There's always something to do. So um, that's what I've been doing. Nice. Yeah, here uh, gyms are closed. I, I, I'm in a tiny condo. Uh, so I have no weights whatsoever. I've got some bands and that's, I've just been running like every day and pushups and squats and, and, and that's about it. <laughs> running push up squats, anything I could do dips. I do dips on the bathtub. Uh, that's about it, man. But and I've it, lost. The it, sad we, thing about it is he just became a body guy too. I was just prior to all this. Listen to me. I got myself a pair of high waisted t- tights. Okay, oh. became a body guy overnight, overnight, and was climbing the ranks. And then uh, now, since the beginning of this stupid lockdown, I've lost fourteen pounds because we can't even get. We haven't been able to get like meat, like good meat. Like we <clears throat> we can get a little bit here and there, but they sell out so damn fast at the store that like uh, chicken is gone, ground turkey's gone. Uh, I'm about to do. They have a couple websites where you can order like meat to your front door. Like Omaha Steaks is one that's out here. Well, they'll just you send them a hundred bucks, and they'll just send you an entire freezer worth of shit. And I think that's what we're gonna have to do. Um, but yeah, dude, it's it's uh, it's rough over here. 
we're, we're in abundance of meat over here. Like, yo, like, we good. Like, I think everyone's kind of calmed down from the hysteria. And we've got, like, like I said, I'm doing the carnival diet. That's literally, like, yeah. there's meat yeah. everywhere. So we're okay. Like, we're, like, that, that, I think we're quite lucky in that. So that's when people are complaining that they're bored or they're complaining. About, I'm like, y'all are lucky. Like, you're alive. You know what I mean? And, mm. like, it's, it's, this ain't forever. Do you know what I mean? Maybe it's because we old and been around for a while that, like, this is like it is what it is, man. I didn't. I grew up not having a mobile phone, man. Even though I look quite young, I keep telling people just keep thinking I'm twenty twenty something. So I'm like, y'all can think that. That's fine. So just don't out me. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, Carlo, what's the? Uh, is there any uh, future plans after all this quarantine stuff uh, goes away and hopefully life resumes as normal? Uh, you, my plan, I was actually supposed to come and see you guys at the end of the year. That was my big plan. Oh, so really? I was going to come back and yeah, come back to LA and, and work and, um, travel around a bit and finish where I left off because I felt like I was doing quite well. Then, um, uh, it just disappeared. And then I was like, it's, I feel like it's one of those things, especially with you guys, you just got to constantly be in everyone's faces. And I felt like after three months, um, a, a few people had heard who I was and what I was doing. And I was like, cool, got momentum. And then I had to come home. So, um, I, I'd, I'd like to come over and do some more stuff. I do still want to plan my domination and take over of the South, Southeast Asian <laughs> countries. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I was just in talks with going over to Singapore, uh, after I'd finished in Malaysia and the Philippines as well. So, um, you know, being a, I can speak fluent Filipino or Tagalog, so I can go over there and abuse them all in my native tongue. Um, I was born here in Australia, so my parents just taught me, you know, how to speak it. So, I mean, I was talks and going over and doing stuff over there. So that was the that was the plan and still is a plan. I think um, there's a market over there that's it's quite untapped and uh, a lot of potential. And I think if you show them what to do and how to do it, um, they'll get there. And I think, uh, you know, they're, they're half of them are tuning in on my on my classes every night, which is dope, um, and just keen to learn and keen to wrestle. So um, there's a lot of potential, man. If y'all get a chance, head over. I'll meet you guys over there and we can uh, tear it up. 